Hello and welcome, my name is Meepolis, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at some middle grade historical fiction, namely Displacement by Kiku Hughes. This book was published by First Second in 2020. Content notes for depiction of 45, depiction of anti-Asian racism, internment camps, and death of a prisoner. As far as violence goes, we see the gun firing, but otherwise people involved are not shown. And according to her biography over on Macmillan, quote, Kiku Hughes is a cartoonist and illustrator based in the Seattle area. Her work has been featured in Beyond Anthology, Volumes 1 and 2, Short Box Number 6, and the Alloy Anthology. She creates stories about identity, queer romance, and compassionate sci-fi. Displacement is her first graphic novel, and it is a story she's wanted to share for as long as she can remember." Unquote. What kinds of keywords come to mind when I was reading this book? History, traumatizing, found family, remembering, and racism. A summary of the book, young Kiku is on a trip with her mother to revisit family history in San Francisco when the mist comes up and she suddenly finds herself back in a 1940s Japanese internment camp alongside her grandmother, Ernestina. Family, both found and biological, are very strong themes in the story of rediscovering family history in the racist, reactionary, and generally pretty bad so-called United States of America. While I didn't realize this book was middle grade before I finished it and was looking at the Goodreads profile, it did mean that the book was very easy reading, at least on a wordiness level. I would say that for a book primarily for younger readers, it did feel more all ages. The art was very, very nice in my opinion. I felt like the different characters all had fairly distinct looks at the color scheme and character designs were very pleasing. Like with George Takai's memoir comic, They Call Us Enemy, Hughes shows a lot of different parallels between Japanese internment camps to the very obvious and gross racism at play under the 45th president. And while this is historical fiction, it was interesting and moving to see how Hughes' own family history inserted itself into the story. Because, to paraphrase the author's note, the camps have obscured her family history through terror. Race is obviously a focus of the book. As we continue to see a rise in obvious and violent anti-Asian racism, it's important to become more aware of the nuances of different kinds of things that brought, for example, Vietnamese, Korean, Indian, and Japanese people to the so-called United States and what kinds of experiences people share and which are more specific. The internment of Japanese Americans during World War II was horrific and brushed past and over for a long time in so-called American education. I wish history didn't feel like it was repeating and remixing itself via current events, but I'm glad that people seem to be talking about these events more. Going into this book, not completely aware of what was in it, the sexual diversity caught me off guard, but was very, very nice. Obviously, queer people have always existed in different ways, but often people like to ignore this reality and erase them. That said, when I clicked over to Twitter, where Hughes identifies as a lesbian, I was much less surprised that she had chosen to include a queer relationship without comment. Looking back into the book with this queerness in mind, I also realized that the way that Kiku traveled back in time leaves her moving through history, watching her family from the outside with potentially no support network. Quickly, however, other people come around her and fill in these gaps in a way that really contrasts the spite of so-called America that we are watching unfold. While gender, disability, and class play very small roles in the story, it also didn't feel like they were completely ignored either. There's many comments and nods to different identities that really felt like it filled out the world around Kiku. So yeah, I think I've talked myself into a 5 out of 5 stars. Highly recommend. Bye y'all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.